Yeah, welcome to our next talk. Welcome to my talk. Thanks for joining. Uh, ultra fast in memory database apps and microservices with Java. And this is actually uh, a short introduction to MicroStream and uh, what MicroStream is and what uh, you can do with uh, MicroStream. So please feel free to ask your questions. My name is Marcus Kett. I'm CEO and co founder of MicroStream. And uh, we are also contributed to the project Helidon. Um, and I'm um, also um, organizer of the JCon conference in Germany and uh, editor-in-chief of the Java Pro magazine. So MicroStream actually is, um, the MicroStream core uh, is a serialization platform. So it's a serialization that is uh, written from scratch that works fundamentally different uh, from the Java serialization. Um, and it's also um, a persistence library and persistence layer, uh, especially for microservices that fits great to microservices because it's lightweight and uh, uh, no dependencies. So um, very easy to use, Java native. And uh, now we're uh, currently working on distributed object graphs like um, yeah, um, distributed caches, um, use um, like Redis or something like that, but uh, we use um, real Java object graphs. And that's uh, the big difference. Uh, basically, MicroStream is a data store, um, but most people uh, are wondering what's the difference between MicroStream and all the other solutions. Um, the big difference is um, the data structure we use. So, um, Traditional database systems um, like relational databases and also the, the, the modern uh, NoSQL databases, they use their own data structure um, or their own format. In Java, we are used to use objects and object graphs for almost everything. So everything is an object in Java, but as soon as we uh, store uh, data, then we have to deal with database-specific data structure or formats. Uh, relational databases, of course, they use tables um, and relations. They, um, the problem here is that um, it's not possible to store Java objects as they are directly into a relational database. So we have uh, various impedance mismatches here. Um, to solve this problem, we need a mapping. So we have to adapt our object model to a database model. And it's the same when we use a NoSQL database, because NoSQL databases come with their own data structure, like key value, column stores, uh, JSON, graphs, or their particular um, object model or graph model. So, uh, and here we have the same problems. We need a mapping or we need um, a data conversion behind the scene or a JSON serialization. Um, so this is here another layer. So we need a mapping or a data conversion. And data conversion or mapping always takes lots of computing time behind the scenes and we have a delay. Um, and to accelerate um, this process, developers are used to use local caches. So the architecture gets more and more complex, and that's why we want to store actually Java objects into um, a data storage. Then we have the uh, distributed solutions like distributed caches or uh, in-memory data grids, in-memory databases. And it's the same here. They also use um, key value, column store, uh, JSON, or something like that. Um, we have the same problem here. Um, and um, as developers, we do not uh, try to solve this core problem. Um, to accelerate our solutions, we actually copy the machines. That's it. Um, you can read more about this uh, at Wikipedia or find something uh, similar in yeah, books or uh, in the internet um, that describes this impedance mismatches between Java object graphs and uh, database-specific data structure. MicroStream works fundamentally different um, because what we are doing is not uh, inventing a new data structure for you guys. Uh, we want to store the object graphs as they are in the memory. 
that's that's the concept. So we use object graphs in, in Java, so we need something to store object graphs, and this is actually what MicroStream is and what MicroStream does. So you only need um, your Java application or your microservice written in Java or your serverless function written in Java, and you uh, need MicroStream as a Java library. You can include it via Maven very easily, uh, and then with MicroStream you're able to store any kind and any s size of object graph. So you can really create whatever you want. You can store it with MicroStream. Um, you can store it in plain files. So you can choose your data storage. You can store it in plain files um, because um, we serialize uh, the, the data directly into the file with the MicroStream serializer. Uh, we use uh, um, our own uh, byte format for that, but you can convert this format. Um, if you want to keep your database system, um, you, know, you can do that. So you can um, also use a relational database um, to store your object graphs persistently on disk. So you can use um, Oracle or Microsoft SQL Server for that. Um, but keep in mind, Microsoft does not generate tables. So there is no object relational mapping. We, all, we only store the binaries. But you can use um, the uh, database systems for that. Um, you can also use uh, blob stores like uh, AWS, uh, AWS uh, S3, for instance. Uh, and you can even use uh, a distributed cache like Redis to store your objects uh, personally on disk. So we have connectors to um, all of these uh, storage technologies. So uh, we serialize the object graph as it is, which means there is no more mapping uh, at all. And uh, so this is very simple to use and it's very fast because uh, there is no more uh, mapping behind the scenes, no more data conversion, and saves a uh, lot of uh, CPU power and minimizes uh, latencies. Um, and this concept gives you now the, the, uh, the, 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 po uh, the possibility to uh, keep your object graph in memory and search your object graph directly in memory. Um, and we have uh, we have n not invented a, um, a query language for that. That's not uh, necessary because Java provides Streams API uh, to, uh, that enables you to search your, your object graphs in, in microseconds. Uh, and this is um, why we talk about uh, microsecond query time um, all the time because uh, database systems, uh, we talk about millisecond um, query times, but with MicroStream, um, which means um, when I use Streams API to search an object graph, it always uh, takes only microseconds, up to a thousand times faster. And on our website, you can find a performance demo uh, that, that shows um, how fast um, MicroStream is, or actually how fast Java is. Um, here, two applications are running. One application is built with Hibernate and with EH Cache with a 250 gigabyte um, Oracle database. It's a bookstore demo, so you can download the code, you can uh, play around with it. The other application is built with MicroStream. There is no, um, no more cache, uh, um, so we do not uh, use a cache anymore, um, only MicroStream and searching object graphs uh, with Streams API. And here, um, all queries are sometimes 10 times faster, sometimes 100x faster, sometimes more than 1000x faster. And it's, it's because of the performance of uh, Streams API and uh, the JVM. So great numbers. So I, I've uh, already mentioned you can choose the the, the storage strategy, you can yeah, get connectors for all uh, major database systems. You can store your objects also in Kafka, uh, in Redis, um, or um, AWS S3 as a blob store. It, uh, MicroStream is a, is a Java library and it runs wherever Java runs, so you can use it in, on desktops, uh, on servers, of course. It runs in, in containers um, and um, it, uh, it works great with GraalVM native images, so it's very important. So it really runs um, seamlessly uh, 
with uh, native images, and it, uh, there is also an implementation for Android, so you can uh, run the same uh, persistence library uh, on Android uh, devices. The only requirement actually is Java version 8. It works uh, with all JVM languages, um, I mentioned already uh, Android. This is not an experimental project. Uh, MicroStream uh, is the, uh, the development started uh, 10 years ago, and uh, three years ago we found, uh, founded a company and uh, launched MicroStream micro as a product. Um, in last year we open sourced MicroStream, and uh, right after we open sourced MicroStream, the Oracle guys has integrated MicroStream into um, Project uh, Helidon. So now MicroStream is part of Helidon. And currently, um, the Open Liberty team is working on an integration. Uh, the micro, the MicroNow team is wor uh, working on an integration right now. You can find the the code on GitHub. So it's on an EPL. So you can use it for uh, your own commercial products. It's no problem. You can include it via Maven very easily. Um, and we are also working together with Payara guys on an integration, so you can... Um, MicroStream delivers an, um, a CDI extension. Um, you can use Payara Micro, so all the, the major micro-profile compatible frameworks. And uh, using MicroStream is super, super easy because uh, you can use your pochos, so you do not have to adapt your classes. There are no... Um, there are no uh, annotations, no super classes, no specific interfaces. Use your classes as they are, so you can really use Pochos. Uh, inheritance is no problem, so whatever you write with Java, so you can, you can store it. You can build your object model completely freely, so, which means you can use all Java types, you can use collections, um, you can use um, objects from third-party libraries. You do not have to implement serial serializable um, for, for serializing and storing an object, so it's not mandatory. So you're very flexible, and um, to store uh, an object, uh, yeah, you only have to call one store method. That's that's it. And MicroStream always um, only stores the delta. Only the changed or the uh, the the added objects are stored persistently on disk. And when you want to load object references and restore the object graph or the object reference in memory again, then you can use la lazy loading. So uh, only the uh, subgraphs is loaded into the memory and is merged automatically directly into your object graph. So you do not have to deal with object copies. That's super convenient and fully object-oriented programming model. As I mentioned, uh, you can uh, keep your uh, system state in memory, uh, your object graph, and then you can uh, query your object graph with Streams API. Um, so, which means your object graph becomes an in-memory database, a pure Java in-memory database. Um, and now the question is, uh, do I have to, uh, to keep all the data in memory all the time? So, because it's in memory. Yes, um, you can do that. Um, if you have enough memory, load all data in, into memory, then it's super fast. Uh, but this is not mandatory. And this is also a big uh, um, difference between uh, previous solutions. So if you only have uh, 4 gigabyte RAM, let's say, and you have uh, 100 gigabyte of storage data, this is not a problem with MicroStream because you have lazy loading. So you decide which object references do you want to load into memory and search um, and uh, when you want to store objects or when you want to load object references into the memory. You do not have to care for the memory management, so it's done by the garbage collector uh, of the JVM. So, super easy to use. And currently, we're working on uh, object graph replication. Um, expectantly, in September, we will launch a MicroStream cluster. Then it's possible to build distributed um, apps or microservices with uh, MicroStream, um, then you're able to uh, to build your object graph, keep it in memory, and um, yeah, um, to replicate it through various um, MicroStream nodes. Um, so this is 
then it's a little bit similar to Redis, let's say, but with the main difference that we do not use any other uh, data structure. So we use really the plain Java object graphs you are used to use in Java. If you want to learn more about my MicroStream, uh, you can download the code via from GitHub. So it's uh, uh, available uh, on our website. Um, you have uh, quite good documentation and uh, you'll find videos on uh, YouTube. And we offer free MicroStream training. Um, so you only have to uh, go to the Java Pro IO training website, then you can uh, book a MicroStream training. It actually costs um, some money, but with our, um, with our registration code, MicroStream uh, 2022, you can uh, book your online course for free. Uh, it's uh, actually two days uh, training for free. Um, yeah, if you're interested, um, book a training, watch the videos, uh, play around and give us feedback uh, at our booth. Uh, here you can uh, join our uh, 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 yeah, raffle. Uh, you can uh, win a prize and grab uh, open, uh, open Liberty t-shirts. Unfortunately, we have no MicroSteam t-shirts. It's because of uh, very difficult to uh, send uh, all the material to the UK from Germany where we are located. So. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask questions. Uh, I have perhaps 30 seconds or so. <laughs> so, you had mentioned you have uh, built serialization from scratch. So, how it is different from the current serialization? So, what I want to ask, how it is different if you, if you serialize your objects into JSON and you do it with Microsoft? How they are different? And what is the Okay, um, the, the question was, um, how, how, what's the difference between uh, a Java serialization or a JSON serialization? Um, so, uh, Mike, the, the main difference is that uh, the Java serialization transfers data, but class information uh, as well, and through runtime, through the deserialization process, it executes code, and this is... Uh, um, this is dangerous. Uh, and MicroStream uh, does not uh, transfer uh, class information or code. It only transfers data. And through deserialization, we never execute code. So uh, injecting malicious code through deserialization is impossible. Um, and the difference between uh, MicroStream and uh, JSON serialization is uh, that MicroStream is built for complex object graphs. So you can use circular references. The, the more complex the object graph becomes, the more, more powerful MicroStream is. So with JSON, it's not possible to, uh, to deal with circular references. Um, this is the main um, yeah, advantage. Uh, so you can really use any object uh, you like, any complexity, and it's, it's super fast and super easy to use uh, for you as a Java developer. The only thing is, uh, it's built for Java, so if you're a Go developer or a C-sharp developer, then, yeah, uh, game over. <laughs> it's built for Java, and uh, so this is a uh, difference. So, um, if you have any questions, we are at the booth. Uh, looking forward for your feedback, and thank you for joining. Have a great day. Thanks.